Hello guys, welcome back to the Sony Engineering YouTube channel. Please subscribe our channel for daily Sony Engineering videos. Today our lecture is about the lapping in the reinforced concrete column or the RCC column. So in this lecture we are mainly focused on the lapping zone and lapping length in the RCC column. First of all to define the lapping. Lapping length is the combined length of two steel bars to transfer the load from one story to the another story. Basically, the length of the steel bar, the standard length of the steel bar is 12 meter and this is the maximum length of any steel bar. So, what we do when there is a building of more than 100 or 50 meters, so what we do, we should combine two steel bars together so that we can transfer the load from the upper stories to the down stories. So, if this is one steel bar and this is another steel bar, so what we do, we overlay these two steel bars so that the load on this steel bar can be transferred to the another steel bar. That's why we need to overlay these two, these two steel bars and this length is called as the lapping length. And there are some standard rules which should be followed while providing the lapping length in the reinforced concrete column. So starting with the first rule. Let's suppose that this is any columns. The two lines shows the column and this column is continued on both sides. So the first rule states that if this is the steel bar provided in the column and this is the another steel bar and this is the overlapping length or the lapping length of the column. So if this diameter or this diameter of the bar is more than 36 meter 36 millimeter if the diameter of any of steel bar is more than 36 millimeter then we should not provide lapping there will be no lapping in such steel bar but we should try to do welding in such type of the columns this is the first rule where the diameter of the bar exceeds in the 36 millimeter then we should avoid lapping but we can provide the welding this will be the second option. Now let's come to the second rule in the lapping of the RCC column. Let's suppose this is in the RCC column and this column has been continued on both sides. Now we want to provide the lapping in this column. Let's suppose this is one steel bar and this is the another steel bar. And these two steel bars are overlapped in the center of the column. Let's suppose. So and the lapping length for the column is mostly found calculated by this formula 50 into diameter of the steel bar. Now what will be the diameter of the steel bar if this bar is let's suppose 25 millimeter and this bar is let's suppose 32 millimeter. So now if we provide the lapping length so what diameter of the bar should be taken here while calculating the lapping length. This is the formula for calculating the lapping length in the columns. So in the case of the two different steel bars with the different diameters, we should always take the smaller diameter. This D should always be a smaller one. So in this case, our diameter will be 25 millimeter because this is a smaller diameter. So for calculating the lap length for such condition, so it will be 50 into diameter of the steel bar, which is 25 millimeter. So it comes out to be 1250 millimeter. So this lapping length, this lapping length distance is 1250 millimeter. So this will be the lapping length. It depends on which, which it depends on the smaller diameter of the steel bar. So we should always select the smaller diameter while calculating the lapping length of the column. Now let's to discuss the third rule in the lapping of the RCC column. Let's suppose this is in a column and this column has been continued on both sides. So, and we want to provide the overlapping in this column. So, let's suppose this is a steel bar coming from the top. So, and we want to overlap the steel bar. So, this is another bar provided. So, this will be called as overlapping length. Now, the rule is, the third rule is that we always provide this tilt in the above steel bar. This bar is being tilted. You see here there is a clear 
there is a clear deviation of the uh, bar from the straight line so we provide the tilt here in the above steel bar and this length of the tilt is should be equal to the 6 into diameter of the steel bar and let's suppose this diameter of this bar is equal to 12 millimeter so this will comes out to be the length of the tilt will be equal to 6 into diameter of the bar which is 12 so it comes out to be 72 millimeter it means that this length this tilt length should be equal to the 72 millimeter and this tilt length is provided while the overlapping of the steel bars in most of the cases they are provided in the columns the fourth and most important rule in the lapping of the RCC column is the lapping zone that where we can provide the lapping in the RCC column we cannot provide the lapping in anywhere in our RCC column but we have some zones that allow us to provide the lapping so let's suppose this is any column and any multi-story building and this is the length L of the uh, column length L so there are three main zones in the RCC column the first one this will be the first zone let's suppose this is the second zone and this one the middle is the third zone of the column so for the overlapping we have three zones in the column of having length L the first zone will be called as the tension zone where there will be no overlapping in this zone overlapping is not allowed in this length this length the first zone length is L by 4 because there is tension in this zone the second zone is also called as the tension zone and the length of this zone is also L by 4 length the total length divided by 4 this will be the zone that is under tension while the middle zone is always under compression and this zone is always under compression and the length of this zone is L by 2 so why we have compression in the middle of the column while the other portions are in tension I will explain this later but first of all in this compression zone only we are allowed to provide the overlapping in this zone the overlapping is not allowed also in this zone the overlapping of the steel bars are not allowed so if you steel bars coming from the top floor so only the overlapping are allowed only in this zone so this zone compression zone is allowed to have overlapping while in the tension there is some bending moment also here in this tension we have bending moments so due to which we are not allowed to have overlapping while only in the compression zone we have overlapping so what is the reason that we have tension and bending moments at the top and the bottom region of the column for example if I consider this is any column and these are the beams provided in any flow so due to the beams if there is a load acting on the beams so due to the beams if there is a bending moment here it comes tension on the columns so this is the bending moment diagram for the beam so it deflects here at the column portion due to which we have some bending moments at the top of the column similarly if this is another beam and this is loaded so this beam will deflect like in this way and it will create some bending moments at the top of the column similarly also in this case so due to which we have bending moments at the bottom of this column and at the top of this column while at the middle portion we don't have any bending moments this is why the middle portion is always under compression while the top and the bottom portion in a multi-story building of is always under tension that's why it's the lapping zone in the column is always L by 2 which is the center of the column of having length L hope you guys understand the basic rules in the lapping of the RCC column and don't forget to subscribe our channel thank you for watching our video